Right, so we finished our quad, which I just enjoyed enormously. Hey, I thought it was awesome. To me, it had a sort of slightly Victorian look about it, which I really liked. But we have a lot of bamboo left over. Because I had to order, I think it was ten poles, and it took uh, seven. So we have three poles left over and some garden sticks. And the immediate thing you've got to think about with something like that, isn't it, is make a bamboo bike. Bamboo bikes are just hugely popular and really ridiculously expensive, and I've got no idea why. Because they're just super easy to make. Now, there's a whole load of ways of going about this, of course. You can buy yourself a kit with a jig to get all the angles right, or you can just measure an existing bike and use that as your own template. So if you feel like buying a kit, well, knock yourself out. If you want to measure up a, an existing bike and use that as a template, well, that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Now, all you do with them is cut your sections of bamboo to the length that you want. And, of course, we're going to base that on an existing bike, so that's the length we're going to cut. You cut them to the length you want and basically join them up, because a bamboo bike, in my mind, is a little bit of a cheat. Actually, part of the frame is made of bamboo. And if you look at these, you'll find that a huge part of the frame is actually made of carbon fibre. And only really the poles in between are the bamboo bit. So in order for this to be a bamboo bike, we've got to make the poles in between, and somehow we have to join them up. So that's what we're going to do. The bike, we're going to use the template. It's a wrecked old bike that, of course, we got from the scrap heap from nothing. And we're going to use that to measure everything. Now, again, there's a number of ways we can approach joining it up. I mean, one thing is we can be purist about it. Saw those two holes to uh, correct and do a wrap joint using, again, a whole host of materials. Carbon fibres one. Surgical dressing is being used. Uh, we can use twine. We can use natural fibres. We can use string. I've even seen it with duct tape and chicken wire. So there's just a whole host of ways we can do this. Or we can chop bits out of it. So this is the front fork section from another bike. And essentially, slot them together like that give it a wrap of string, we'll have our bamboo bike. Because remember, the bamboo bike qualifies as a bamboo bike because this bit's bamboo. And of course, we get all the angles there with that. That's the head section. We've also got this, which is a, a bottom section with the axle crank sitting right there. We can slot it on there. We've also got this, which I really like. This is an axle, and the bearing would go into the bamboo like that because the steel has to rub on steel. The steel rubs onto the bamboo, it'll wear the bamboo out in about 10 minutes. We pop that in there, and then we'll get steel on steel. So we can use tying methods, we can use scavenged bits that we're going to put in there for the support, or we can use the bamboo itself. There's a whole range of ways that we can approach this. Sorry about the noise, they're trimming the grass. Anyway, hardest thing about a bamboo bike is cutting the ends of the poles, because they have to have a little sort of semicircular cut in them so that they fit against the other pole. Now what I've got here is a hole cutting saw that has the same diameter that I'm going to fit that against. I've cut that a bit long. What you do is stuff that under something heavy get it going so that you cut that and then you offer it up and cut the other side so that it's the right length so that's why this is a bit long so we cut that out now it's gonna want to skip so you have to press in that direction against the hole saw once the hole saw is going Okay, there's all my bits cut out and ready to assemble into the bike frame. Now, I've got some metal parts. This bit I took from uh, the original bike, remember, because that's actually where the handlebar goes, so that's going to be difficult. There are other solutions to this, incidentally, but most of them involve salvaging something like this. And I was thinking about reworking this, but right now I'm going to use that head section from a scrap bike. And, of course, you come across scrap bikes, so you can buy a bike for a tenner or 20 quid, and you want that section of it. The other bits that I've got is this little hook where the wheels are going to go, and a couple of bearings for the crank shaft. Now, bamboo is awesome when you try and bend it like that. It's a real unfortunate tendency that down this line, it splits really, really easily. So you can split that, no problem at all. Start it. There you go. Split straight away. So splitting bamboo along that section is one of the things you need to watch out for, which is why you lash it around there, because it stops that split. It's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use a lashing technique. Now, 
There are lots of materials you can use. I'm going to use jute because I like the naturalness of it, but polypropylene, carbon fiber, glass fiber, whatever it is, I'm going to use that, but there's a load of lashing you can use. And essentially, here's the top bar. That bit slots in there, and we lash it on. That bit slots in there, lash it on, and we've got ourselves a bike frame. Now, to lash it, you drill a hole through here, feed it around and around and around, and then go around to prevent that splitting I was talking about. You won't get that through unless you use a, a kind of needle. So get yourself a bit of bent wire and poke it through and you'll be able to lash that up beautifully. Okay, so how to make these joints. You can see this is a rear stair. That's where the wheel is going to go. And I've drilled a hole there and a hole here and here in the stairs. And what you do is take a bit of string and a bit of wire and make a kind of upholstery needle. It looks like this. Then all we do is take our bit of wire and continue to feed it through the hole just like you were sewing until you make this bunch here. And when you've filled that, what we do then is wrap around. So let me finish this and then we'll do the wrapping. So when you've stitched the joint, all you do is take the remainder and keep on wrapping it around, obviously keeping it tight and making a nice wrap to cover that hole and cover the stitching that you did like that. So what you end up with after that is something like this, which looks remarkably like a bicycle frame, which is pretty awesome considering that's what it should look like. Now I've chosen to do this because I'm interested in whether this will work or not. I don't know if it will, but we're going to find out. Once you've made the frame and given a little twist so everything's true, because at this stage it's a little slack, you resin all of those and that fixes everything in place and makes a nice firm bond. You might want to use carbon fibre, you might want to use glass fibre, but the essentials is just the same. You do exactly the same thing with your jointing material of choice. Anyway, the next thing to do with this is obviously hang all the bike bits on it and see how it performs as a bike. So that's what we'll do in the next video. But I hope you enjoyed the video so far and thank you very much for watching and please do remember to subscribe.